Please, if you would like to make a comment, please. This one, uh, which it seems that there are deep uh, misunderstandings in this theory of special relativity, <laughs> because the algebra they are using, U plus B and the Einstein's law of action velocity, is in fact an algebra of hyperbolic space. But it's not recognized that the values are hyperbolic values. They consider the usual velocity, which is x by t. So these quantities are being taken as Galilean quantities, but a hyperbolic algebra is being used, and there is an inconsistency between the two. Because the question is said about the coverage of the space, that special relativity is, is on uh, plain uh, Euclidean space, and we said it is uh, on high, uh, hyperbolic space. So that question is also related to this uh, sort of uh, difference between views is that in fact it's believed that these are hyperbolic quantities which means on Euclidean plane space but in fact the algebra says that they are not Euclidean quantities. So to put them together the approximation will approximate where they agree but the disagreement comes from the fact that one algebra in another space. Since some other the smart people who have been rejected is the Galilean University of Yes. And your formalism is quite general. But we, 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 we should apply to any kind of particle, irrespective of the nature of the particle. Okay. So my question is uh, I would like to make it very specific. Uh, for example, if you consider what is happening at KLHC, they are accelerating protons to a kinetic energy of 7 tera electron volt. And that is unprecedented energy in, in accelerated physics. But still, they are not detecting any proton exceeding the velocity of light. Can you, can you comment on that? Why it is only seen in the case of neutrinos? And in particle accelerators, we are accelerating electrons in giga electron volt energy. Protons in tera electron volt energy. And still they are not exceeding the velocity of light. So what's happening there? Thanks for your question. But my answer is what you are talking about is related to experimental facts. And I am talking about this. Let me, let me finish this. I am talking about only the truthful aspects of that. So, sorry. Uh, I have no comment about your question. Sorry, maybe I can make a comment. Uh, rather long, uh, story, rather long story. Uh, we see particles uh, traveling across the night. And exactly 20 years ago, at our university, for example, Professor Lindsay announced that uh, he uh, has measured uh, superluminal velocities with microwave pulses by quantum tunneling. But later on, we uh, had to revise his results. It was some kind of artifact. It's very difficult. You don't measure separated uh, particles, you measure a, a lot of pulses, yeah? and the pulse has a structure, and uh, the structure is a little bit hampered maybe by some uh, artifacts, and uh, later on they uh, uh, stated that it was really an artifact. I think here this uh, results from the CERN are very serious results, the most serious in the world uh, till now, and uh, oh, okay, it's a good question. We didn't observe it for some other particles uh, right now, uh, and uh, yeah, that's a matter of time. <laughs> if the search is not over, we need uh, some other experiments, for example, the minus experiment, or uh, we have experiments in Japan, and so on. Uh, it's uh, confirmed or not. Uh, I think in one year it becomes more uh, clear, but it's really a difficult uh, uh, topic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, can I comment? Uh, I'll give a comment actually. Um, uh, what's happening here, I think, uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the print archive, yeah. you find uh, till the, 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 there are about 250 papers on the upper Yes, yes. yes. And, uh, most of those papers, I would say most of those papers really do not favor what's made by the operator's experience of this. 
And the other thing is, most of those theories, the new theories uh, that people have proposed, yes. are specific to neutrinos. This weakly jetting particle is doing something with the sky and uh, weak neutral current and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's specific to neutrinos. Yes. If you have a general theory, that should apply to every kind of particle, in theory it should apply to me as well. Mm. So uh, that is one problem. Uh, the other problem is, I think, uh, why should a particular experiment would detect the so-called Galilean velocity to one question? Yes. Okay, but this is still an open question. Okay, the neutrons are the most fascinating part of the experiment. Yeah, they uh, don't want to reveal the real nature. And we, we, you know, we have almost 40 experiments in the world. Only concerning the neutrinos, yeah, also at Grand Sasso, we have a lot of experiments. The more I see them, and uh, uh, the mass experiments are going on. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a matter of time, and in one year or two years, uh, we have... Uh, we know either way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, some other questions? Okay. Our theory is general. So, it's not specific to the general as uh, is observed. It's general. And if no other particles do not reach or exceed the velocities of uh, light, in, in our view, there is no reason why it should not to start with. So in theory, it should be possible. Next, behind observations, we always have some theories. Yesterday, Dr. Norman was talking about time different, dilation in, in new, de new one decay and things like that. But what really measures is tracks in the particles. And what calculates time and so on. And those conditions depending on the theories one one accepts. So behind many of these observations are theories people try and believe in them. So those beliefs have greatly motivated the results we observe. More experiments and observations are needed, but of course again we believe that in our case we have no reason why other particles should not exceed it. Okay, same. Uh, can I just uh, make another comment? Sorry, I've been thinking about the city of electron, where it has an uh, energy of 10 mega electron volts. I think this is a very simple problem. And uh, it's a case of problem. If you have, you have an electron that has a magnetic energy of 10 mega electron volts, what is the velocity of that electron in your problems? Yeah. You, you, you don't have to answer me right now. You can just do the calculations and come up with the number. Yeah. I, I know the answer right now because they have, we have not explored it. And often up in a horizon, we are not proposing any uh, and view to how things actually, for the expansion of mass, which is in the theory of experimental situation. But we are not imposing any image. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can continue. My name is Tarek Saifur Islam. I am from the Department of Economics. Why am I that I would understand why I'm sitting in a world about the things that are going on? That could be good. But I found today, in the, particularly in the last uh, talk, that they were discussing something that also educated my mind. When I first read in the newspaper that a particle was found, now I think it's called neutrino which could travel at a speed faster than light. I, who only knew that nothing could travel at a speed faster than light, was very surprised. Now I'm glad that my colleagues at Russia University have never put this issue and have shed light on this. And it appears that the conclusion is this, that neutrino could travel at speed faster than light. Not only that, uh, another author said, co-author, that neutrinos could travel at speed faster than light. Not only that, it is likely that other particles could also 
display this feature this is it so so they are paying or it is anticipating that their results will be far more better than it is today now i am going to comment on this and the honorable chairman has also spoken that so far the research work on this and my colleague on my left have been on the nutrients in future they may say that i am as for i have no person to comment on that but what is the most common misconception is that both the authors were speaking or a copy of great controls but they were speaking with confidence and they were speaking with clarity and that made me proud because I belong to the same university and I would say that I would say that by coming to this seminar I was really hesitating am I fit to go to this seminar but now since I was invited to the internet and personally I came now and I would say without understanding much about it that has been very difficult and I would like to congratulate the authors who have presented their papers and other participants who have shed light on different aspects of the issue and also the honorable chairman who has been convened to clarify things when clarification was needed. Thank you very much. Okay, so there, there should not be any confusion about that one. 
focus is very really hard in just few minutes time and I am talking about a lot of things and displaying a lot of things over there. It's not that easy to track all those things. You will get the proceedings of these papers vividly describe everything. In just a quick time or so, our client book, Vice Chancellor, has taken that responsibility of publishing it as soon as possible. Then you can go through that one and we find that there is nothing confusing or there is nothing inconsistent. Thank you very much. Space time interval is a particular problem. More confused, problem more confused than in what you are talking about. I cannot understand. So if we go in, is a space time interval is three, just that three values. Like like space like and time like. Okay. But according to you, I have never mentioned anything like this in my talk. So I would expect the theoretical questions what I talked about. But so please, no, you know, 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 we have to declare its space time interval. Is it? So, do. Again, I don't accept it as theoretical question to my talk. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. And if you are really interested, then you have to make me understand first what you are talking about. And I think you are to be on to this department. Thank you. Okay. Later on, we can get access to it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So, what are the questions from the other? It's just a comment about that question. I think what you have to realize is that in the proposal proposed by Professor Tamuta, the Lawrence invariance, the symmetry of Lawrence transformation is already happening. So, in the conventional spatial relativity, uh, it is not really applicable to this kind of problems. Yeah, uh, that's the question I was expecting here. What is that? Okay. Okay, uh, let me make a comment. I want to use this kind of experiment with neutrinos. Yeah. These are weak interacting particles, and you cannot run an electron over such a kind of distance, for example, but with neutrinos, it's possible to run a neutrino about uh, 700 and uh, 50 kilometers, for example. I cannot exclude say, I mean, we have some other results in the years. Okay, some other questions? Yeah. I mean, this would have a place they were meant by posting it. Sorry, what kind of what? What kind of thing do we get if we do not go faster than that? Yeah. Which can show that neutrino goes faster than the speed of light. 